there are many epigenetic clocks, but which clock is best or clocks is best for uh, its correlation with chronological age or other aging-related uh, phenotypes, including cancer, cell senescence, or mitochondrial dysfunction? So to address that question, uh, the latest paper from Morgan Levine's group, published less than two weeks ago, um, addresses that issue. So let's get into the data. So first, there, are, there have been 11 epigenetic clocks published since 2011. So let's just briefly go through each of them. So uh, the first epigenetic clock was published in uh, 2011 by the uh, Bachlands Group, and they used uh, methylation data from two sites that were able to predict 70% of the variation in chronological age. So then in 2012, the Gar uh, Garagnani Group, sorry if I'm messing up the name, used data for one methylation site and identified a stronger correlation, uh, 0 0.92, a correlation of 1 would be perfect, so 0 0.92 is very strong, with chronological age. In 2013, Hanem's Group uh, used data for 71 methylation sites and identified an even stronger correlation with chronological age, 0 0.96. And then the uh, epigenetic clock that many of us know about, the Horvath clock, which is what uh, D my DNA age uses, um, uh, uh, was the so, so far the strongest of the bunch. They used um, methylation data for 51 tissues and cells across 353 meth methylation sites and identified correlations of 0 0.97 and 0 0.96 in different um, uh, data sets with chronological age. In 2014, the Widener's group used data for 99 to 102 methylation sites and identified correlations ranging from 0.93 to 0.99 with chronological age. So then in 2016, Lynn's group, 99 methylation sites, 0.93 correlation with uh, chronological age. Uh, later that year, the Vidal Bralo's uh, group and Yang also uh, used uh, their uh, methylation sites, so eight methylation sites in Vidal Bralo's group. Uh, with 0 0.97 and 0 0.67 uh, correlations uh, with chronological age in training and validation cohorts. Uh, and then Yang's group, they used data for 385 methylation sites, but identified very weak correlations with chronological age in CD4 and monocytes, so in immune cells. Uh, and then in late in 2017, uh, Jang's group uh, used uh, 10 meth methylation sites and didn't measure chronological age, but uh, associated that with all-cause mortality risk, ACM risk. And then in 2018, uh, Levine's group uh, looked at uh, data for 513 methylation sites and identified correlations of 0 0.68 and 0 0.74 with chronological age. And then uh, Steve Horvath's group uh, published another epigenetic clock and updated from their earlier 20, uh, 2013 clock and used data for 391 methylation sites and again identified strong correlations with chronological age, 0 0.9 and 0 0.95. So in this paper, they used data from these clocks and compared them against each other. So the first comparison is how do each of, those, each of these clocks compare in terms of their correlation with chronological age. So to address that, they looked at correlations, uh, they looked at data from uh, pooled uh, from 16 cell and tissue types, including breast, cheek, brain, colon, uh, cord blood, skin, um, uh, monocytes, so immune cells, uh, and other cells. So using that pool data, then they, they then looked at the epigenetic age acceleration across all the different uh, cell types. So which one was best? So here we have all 11 clocks and their correlations. And the best performing uh, epigenetic clock for their association uh, correlation with uh, chronological age was the initial Horvath uh, epigenetic clock in 2013. So we can see that the correlation was very strong, 0 0.94, with a highly significant p-value. And interestingly, the more recent Horvath epigenetic clock had a, also a strong, very strong correlation of 0.85. Um, and when comparing the other uh, epigenetic uh, uh, clocks, we can see that many of them had very weak or, or, or poor um, correlations with chronological age, including Yang with correlation of 0.23 or, or Jang negative 0.49 um, so, and so on. So uh, based on this data, uh, Horvath, both of Horvath's, Epigenetic clocks were the best predictors of chronological age. So what about other aging-related uh, phenotypes, including cancer? So to address that, uh, um, they looked at um, epigenetic data for six of the epigenetic clocks and with the expectation that they'd see a higher epigenetic age in tumor samples from breast, colon, lung, and pancreas when compared with normal tissues that didn't have cancer. So which of the epigenetic clocks were best at predicting cancer, essentially? 
And the answer for that is Levine and Yang's uh, epigenetic uh, uh, clocks. We can see that here, that the red are the tumor samples in each of the various tissues, and we can see a higher epigenetic age for the Levine and Yang epigenetic clocks uh, when compared with the normal tissues. Now, also note that where the, whereas the Horvath epigenetic clocks were best for their correlation with chronological age, in contrast, they were not significantly associated with um, a higher epigenetic age when compared with normal tissues for uh, any of the, the breast, colon, lung, or pancreas uh, uh, tumor cells. So not all the epigenetic age clocks are the same, at least in terms of their predictive ability for aging or cancer so far. So what about cell senescence? Which epigenetic clock is best for identifying cell senescence? So again, they looked at six of the 11 clocks um, in, in this analysis, and uh, the ones that were best were the Levine and Lynn uh, um, epigenetic clocks. So I'll get into the Hanum in a minute. First, let's go through the Lynn and Levine. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at epigenetic age acceleration and going from less senescent cells on the x-axis to more senescent. So more specifically, the EP are early passage cells. These are less senescent cells. And then NS are nearly senescent cells. OIS are uh, oncogene-induced senescent cells. And RS are replicatively senescent cells. So the, going from the left side of the, the x-axis to the right side, we're going from less senescent to more senescent. So in terms of the Levine and Lynn epigenetic clocks, we can see that going from the less senescent cells to the uh, uh, near senescent and replicatively senescent cells, there's an increase in epigenetic age. Now, uh, there wasn't a significant increase going from the early passage cells, the less senescent cells, to the OIS, the oncogene-induced senescent cells, for either of those clocks. In contrast, that's what we see for the Hanum uh, epigenetic clock. So that's the only clock that saw an increase in epigenetic age for the OIS cells when compared with the uh, non-senescent cells. So again, not all the epigenetic clocks are the same in their ability to detect cell senescence, cancer, or chronological age. There, is, there isn't one, so far, there isn't one epigenetic clock that's best across all of them. So what about uh, mitochondrial function, which is, again, uh, mitochondrial function declines with age. Uh, it's mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of aging. So to address that, they took cells that had normal mitochondrial function, 143B rho positive cells, and then they depleted uh, mitochondrial DNA in these cells, which is uh, rho, uh, o, uh, rho zero minus cells. So that's, those are cells that are mitochondrial, mitochondrial uh, have depletions in mitochondrial DNA, and when there's depletions of mitochondrial DNA, they have dysfunctional mitochondrial DNA. Um, they have dysfunc dysfunctional mitochondria, sorry, uh, that aren't able to produce ATP as well and produce more reactive oxygen species. So in that situation, one would expect a higher epigenetic age acceleration in cells that have depleted mitochondrial DNA. So that's what we would look at here with uh, red versus, versus uh, blue. So which epigenetic clock was best for identifying um, mitochondrial, uh, epigenetic age acceleration in the mitochondrial, de mitochondrial depleted cells? And in this case, uh, four of the six were good. So Levine, uh, Horvath's 2018 epigenetic clock, the Lin and Yang epigenetic clocks uh, all, saw, all saw significant increases in epigenetic age uh, acceleration compared with the uh, cells that had normal mitochondria. In contrast, the initial Horvath clock that was great at its, for its correlation with chronological age and the Hanum clock did not see significant increases in epigenetic age in the uh, cells that had depletions for mitochondrial DNA. Now, uh, uh, each of the data I already showed compared the individual clocks. So uh, they then took a, a basically composite of as much of the data from all 11 clocks to derive a new epigenetic clock, a meta-epigenetic clock. So how does that uh, uh, associate with all-cause mortality risk, ACM, chronological age, CA, cancer, cell senescence, and as I'll get into the next slide, uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, neuropathology. So first, when looking at all-cause mortality, we can see that the meta-epigenetic clock was better than the two best, uh, previously best-performing clocks, the Levine and Jang uh, clocks, uh, for, the, uh, for the correlation between an, epi epigenetic, an older epigenetic age with all-cause mortality risk. So here, having an older epigenetic age using the meta-epigenetic clock had, had a more than six-fold increase in all-cause mortality risk, whereas the Levine and Jang uh, clocks identified lower uh, uh, all-cause mortality risk around three. So the meta clock, it was double that. The, the risk is double that for a higher epigenetic age. So what about uh, the association with chronological age? So we can see that in the lower left panel, 
Uh, and interestingly, they so first they, they looked at uh, data from uh, four different tissue types, including whole blood, breast, brain, and then skin cells. And whereas uh, the Horvath clocks had very strong correlations of 0.85 or higher uh, for epigenetic age or chronological age, uh, in contrast, the meta clock was not as good as the initial Horvath clock. So uh, this again goes to the, to the point of not all epigenetic clocks are the same in terms of their ability to correlate with chronological age or the individual uh, disease-related phenotypes. And even in this case, we see the meta clock is better at all-cause mortality risk, but not as good as uh, predicting for predicting chronological age compared with some of the other clocks. So what about cancer? Uh, so here, too, a significant increase in uh, epigenetic age, uh, the red, uh, compared with the blue, so normal cells, so tumor cells in red for the breast, colon, lung, and pancreas. Uh, so there's a significant increase, a higher epigenetic age with the meta clock versus uh, normal, normal cells. Now, what's the, perhaps the most interesting, uh, or one of the most interesting data for the meta clock is its association with cell senescence. So that's, that's, that's what we see here. So whereas none of the clocks by themselves uh, were associated with uh, a higher uh, you know, senescence, so going from NS to OIS to RS, um, the Levine and, and, and one of the other clocks, were, uh, there were significant, uh, gosh, there were significantly more, a uh, higher epigenetic age acceleration for two of the measures of senescence, but not all three. In contrast, the meta-epigenetic clock, all three measures of senescence, so uh, when compared with the early passage cells, were significantly higher, uh, so an older epigenetic age for each of those senescent cell types when compared with the uh, less senescent cells when using the meta-clock. And last, the meta-epigenetic clock is associated with Alzheimer's disease neuropathology. So what we're looking at here uh, are the standardized betas, which are each positive, uh, which indicates that a higher epigenetic age uh, for the meta-epigenetic clock is associated with more amyloid, with more neuritic plaques, with more NFT, neurofibrillary tangles, and a higher tangle load, uh, again, for a higher meta-epigenetic clock uh, epigenetic age. So as a quick summary, not all epigenetic clocks are the same, whether they're predicting chronological age, cancer, cell senescence, mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, or uh, in the case of the uh, meta-epigenetic clock, uh, there's a, a new novel uh, association with Alzheimer's disease neuropathology. So that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.